I was looking for any way to feel better. I was an only child of an alcoholic mother. Upper and middle class, Catholic school. I had a very unhappy childhood. I happened to live in San Francisco. Hate Ashbury was happening. I was a little young, but it didn't matter. I got drunk with my girlfriend, almost 13, for the first time. I was introduced to weed, but then came acid, and I loved acid. That was fun. That was pure escapism, going to concerts, being high on acid. It was just fun. Then I started getting into the harder drugs. I got introduced to speed by a girlfriend. And when I was maybe 14 and a half, almost 15, I met my husband-to-be who was one of the biggest drug dealers in the area. I got introduced to heroin at 14 and a half, 15. And that was the drug that resonated with me. Um, heroin was it. We had more money than we knew what to do with. Times were good. I never had to get sick because the drug was always there. And like all good things, thing, good things come to an end. He got busted went to jail. I was addicted. I had a young son and I was not equipped to be on my own. Mother was still an alcoholic. She was trying to help me as best she could, um, but I didn't have any resources. So I continued with my addiction. I went to jail. I had almost died. I was at the end of my rope and I didn't, I didn't know where to turn. I didn't know how to stop. I was in jail and a woman told me about Walden House. She uh, was an ex-client and she said, if they offer you diversion, you don't want to go to Delancey Street, you want to go to Walden House. She goes, it's great. She goes, you get to smoke weed, you get to do all these fun things. And I'm like, yeah? You know, and she's like, yeah. Well, she didn't tell me that she got kicked out for doing all these fun things. I went before the judge and we had requested diversion and I said, I wanna to go to Walden House. I got busted in October. I had to spend Thanksgiving and Christmas in jail. I felt really sorry for myself. And I came into program in January of 1975 and I was there for almost two years learned how to be drug free. I had a family. I had peers that supported me. It was like stepping off the merry-go-round. I, I kept saying to myself, you can't think about anything on the outside right now. You have to concentrate on yourself or you're never going to make it. You can't think about your kid in early recovery. You can't think about anything except for you have to be selfish, you have to think about yourself. It was really hard for me, but I was here to recover, so I tried to follow the rules. It worked. They were there, they helped me get, um, I was at risk of losing my son um, because of my addiction. And I was very lucky in that I had a best girlfriend whose mother actually took became part of foster care so that my son didn't have to go into the system and she took care of him for me for the two years plus the six months after treatment that it took me to get him back. I was in my addiction for probably about eight years altogether. I was 20 or 21 when I went into treatment. I'm clean to this day. You earned your privileges in recovery, um, only you earned them over a longer period of time. So. The first 30 to 60 days, you were, had no communication with the outside other than your lawyer. Um, and that was it, or medical, you know. But no, I couldn't talk to my mother, I couldn't talk to my son. No phone privileges, nothing. I was in-house for the, at least the first 30 days. Um, and it was during that time where you really had to kind of just let it go and realize that 
this is, you have to be selfish and take this time for yourself. The first time I got my going out, and this wasn't even going out on a pass, this was being able to walk down the street to go to the store. I remember I was petrified and I asked um, one of my peers to actually go with me and they said no, this is a privilege, you need to go down there on your own. Well let me tell you, Walden House was in the Haight-Ashbury. Haight-Ashbury was my old stomping grounds, but I went down, went to the store, and the worst thing that happened to me is I got approached by the Hare Krishnas <laughs> to come to dinner with them and learn about what they do. So that was easy, really easy to say no to. And I remember being so glad to be back um, in the facility. Um, that's you know, how dependent I was in that, in that time on, you know, and how insecure I was about being strong. We had older clients that would basically be, we called them big brothers, big sisters. And like in high school, you know, the senior kind of takes the freshman under their wing, same concept. I had somebody I could talk to, I had somebody that would answer my questions. I actually, got more from listening to other people than I actually did about talking about myself. For me, hearing other people's stories made mine seem not so bad. And that was really helpful. I didn't know, you know, what other people did or what experiences they had. And I went to work for the program, I started getting promoted and all of a sudden I was working 10 hour days, not counting my commute. And then I had Boy Scouts and I had, you know, he was a BMX bicycle rider, so we were going to do that all the time. It was like something had to give. And when I started falling asleep in my night classes, I had, had, to, it, I had to give it up. Um, I had to make choices, hard choices. I haven't felt the kind of enthusiasm and excitement I felt in a long time. My whole life has been spent trying to get people to get some of what I got, and now I have a chance to do it again. Detox to Rehab wants to help as many people as possible, and do it the right way. Please subscribe, comment, and like our channel. Thank you for watching.